Here's a problem where the magnitude of the acceleration is not our usual 9.8 meters per second squared because we have a ball that's rolling down a ramp and it is being pulled down by gravity but it's not being pulled straight down it's at an angle so let's try this example problem a ball rolls with constant acceleration of 6.5 meters per second squared down this inclined ramp here's the ball and it's going to roll down this ramp how long does it take to reach the bottom of the ramp 7.2 meters from where it was released so it was released here and by the time it hits the bottom, we are told that that's 7.2 meters. So let's go ahead and assign our reference frame. But as we do that, we're going to do it a little bit different than what we've been used to doing. And this is what's really cool. We can give any reference frame we want. So I'm going to tilt the paper so that this is positive y and down the ramp is positive x. Now that's pretty cool because that allows me to say um, that the distance it rolls down is positive x and I don't have to worry about the angles. So let's go back to setting this up and we're going to use our usual, we're going to round up our usual suspects. So v initial we'll say is equal to zero because it's released from rest. It, it doesn't say that but it's implied where it was released. And then we'll find our v in v final. We don't know it right now, but we may want to know um, in the, some point in the future. Now, delta x, and remember, I can say delta x because down the ramp I've defined as being the positive x direction. Delta x is equal to x final minus x initial. So those two kinematic quantities are contained within delta x. And then we have, of course, acceleration. And that is given to us in the problem as 6.5 meters per second squared. Now, I know I'm going to leave this positive because I have defined down the ramp as being positive x direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's use our kinematic equation, um, position time equation, so delta x is equal to v initial times time plus one half acceleration times the square of time and there's the quadratic function in time. So now um, what let's do is let's go ahead and put in some values that we know and um, let's see we do know that I forgot to put this here but we do know that delta x is equal to 7.2 meters so let's put 7.2 meters and v initial is zero so we know that this term is going to go to zero because zero multiplied by time is equal to zero so this is equal to one half acceleration which we are given as being 6.5 meters per second squared times time squared now let's consider for a minute whether or not this displacement um, that we're given for delta x, 7.2 meters, if that should be positive or negative. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can just go ahead and start solving the equation and then straighten up our sign. But the other thing too is um, if we say that over here at the bottom of the ramp is x final, then 7.2 meters is over here. 7.2 minus 0 is positive 7.2. The other check on that is that when we go ahead and multiply this out and divide by uh, to get square of time we know we need a positive value in our square root expression so it looks like the signs are in agreement so I'll go ahead and multiply this out 7.2 meters is equal to half of 6.5 is 3.25 meters per second squared times time squared so then if I divide both sides by 3.25 meters per second squared, I'm going to end up with time squared. Let me scoot that up. I'm going to end up with time squared being equal to um, 
two point I'm gonna to go to four decimal places here. Two point two one five three seconds squared. So it's important to note to to use seconds squared as a check because when I take the square root of the time function of the time value, I'm gonna take the square root of seconds squared and all will be well. And so that works out to be um, given the two significant digits we're working with, it turns out to be 1.488, I'll call that 1.5 seconds. Okay, so we don't really need to use any calculus here because this, when the initial velocity is zero, this is a really easy algebra function or algebra equation to solve. Now, let's go over and have a look at what happens when we want to find the velocity. To find the velocity, not that we're asked to do it, but we're just practicing some calculus here, let's remind ourselves of a couple of things that we know from our calculus practice. First of all, the derivative of a sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives of each term. And we are gonna have several terms that we wanna look for the derivative of, and then we'll sum them back together and we'll have our, our derivative of position and that will be our velocity then the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. So just a couple of reminders there. Now underneath here, I've got our position as a function of time equation, and you can see, as we've done before, that it's quadratic in time. In other words, the time um, variable is the one that's squared. That's the quadratic term. And so let's take the derivative of position with respect to time and let's follow those rules. First of all, the rule that the derivative of a sum is gonna be the sum of the derivatives of each individual term. So delta x is a constant, and we remember that the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. The derivative of this would be initial velocity, but since initial velocity was zero, we'll go ahead and put zero there as well, and then the derivative of this term is 2 times 1 half is 1, so 1 times the acceleration, which was given to us as 6.5 meters per second squared times time. So time is reduced in power from 2 to 1, so times time, and let's see what that simplifies to. So position with respect to time, its derivative, p prime of t is equal to 6.5 meters per second squared times time. So if we wanted to know the velocity of that ball when it reached the end of the ramp, we would simply remind ourselves that this is now the velocity function. So p prime of t is equal to v of t and that's 6.5 meters per second times time. Meters per second squared, which I'm gonna leave off here just for being speedy. So let's um, take our time value that we solved for over here and say, well, the velocity at time 1.5 was equal to 6.5 times 1.5. And if I compute that out, 6.5, times 1.5 is equal to 9.75. So we would say V at 1.5 seconds is equal to 9.75, oops, 75, sorry, meters per second. And we, we solved for the velocity at 1.5 seconds into this experiment, but we could have solved for the velocity at any time value that a problem asked us for. And that's the beauty of using the derivative. We can insert any time in there that we want, not just the ending time when the problem is over. There you have it.